We're back. It's time for Intercode Podcast. Yeah. Keep going. Come on, listen as we joke and laugh with you. Come on. Woo! It's time for the Intercode. Come and laugh with us. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but hey, we just went That was that. so good. We have a theme song. I'm not going to remember that. Oh, uh, okay. No. Okay. Dude, we're recording right now. And we can play it back whenever okay. we want to. Fine. That works so good. That's only if they want me to do it. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if they enjoyed my singing. Oh uh, yeah, we do. We we all enjoyed it. They can't. They're yelling at their radios right now. Is <laughs> we that even want a thing? more. We want more. <laughs> <laughs> Listening on their phones more like it. Yeah. <laughs> Listening on their radios. What's hey, a radio? I, it's that weird thing that um you know gets weird stations that play the same songs over and over again. <laughs> as far as as far as I know, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We've had a, a little bit of a hiatus just for a couple weeks that we'll, I'll explain <laughs> later on, but this is the Enter Code Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Ryan Welch, with the super handsome chosen one, yeah, John Jefferson Jr. What up, people? <laughs> See, I'm going to remember it. It's just, it takes me a little bit, you know? You came up with that nickname how many episodes ago? I don't know, but I like it. It just it just rolls off the tongue. It does roll off the tongue, and you you got it. You got to remember it as best as you can. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, sorry for the little hiatus that we had. Um, I had a bit of a, a COVID quarantine confusion. It was is what I'm gonna, times. is what I'm going to call it. So, long story short, for all our listeners out there, in COVID times in this new normal that we have, you know, if you are exposed to a potential someone who either has tested positive or maybe they were exposed to someone who tested positive, it's kind of the safe bet if you can to isolate yourself, quarantine yourself. So for me, we were visiting some family friends and found out that their kids' teacher tested positive. So there was just a couple days here where I just, you know, kind of quarantined myself a little bit as much as I could. Although the timing of it was kind of goofy. I, I don't think we hung out with them when <laughs> when that teacher was 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 had it. So anyway, long story short, sorry for the hiatus. Sorry for the little bit of delay, but we're excited to be with you guys for an episode tonight. Um, if you guys for some reason forgot... Remember that we are on social media, and we would love to hear some feedback from you. Uh, remember, we are on Facebook and on Twitter, at EnterCodePod. And we're also on Instagram, at EnterCodePodcast. And of course, you can go on our Anchor.fm page, just search EnterCodePodcast, and you can leave us a voicemail that we leave can Leave that voicemail, in. yeah. Oh, keep going. That's all I got. Ah, okay. You know what? The magic <laughs> was there in the beginning. That's all that matters. John... How have you been these past few weeks? Good. You've been good. I've been good. I okay. mean, a little stressed, but... Oh, oh? I mean... Talk to us. Talk to us. It's hard out there with toy hunting, because... <laughs> it's kind of why we've been on a hiatus, because it's been hard. You know, you go to the store, and they're like, yeah, it's coming this day. Come at this time. And we're there, and they don't show up. No, they don't show up. We this it actually kind of inspired this to- the main topic for our show this evening, where our toy hunting has been based on the GI Joe classified series, a uh, obviously a the cartoon and the toys have been around for generations. The co- oh sorry, the toys have been around for generations. <laughs> the cartoon mid eighties, late eighties. I want to say mid '80s. Mid '80s, I think mid '80s. Um, obviously, the, the cartoons are classics, and those are kind of things that that John and I grew up with. And so, when they announced this series back in February, is that when New York Toy Fair was? Sounds about that time before all this craziness. So happened. So long ago! Wow, it feels like forever. Anyway, that's besides the point. So when they announced the series, I mean, I was excited. You know, I, I didn't think too much of it. But I was excited for it. Um, I remember you told me to hop on to, you know, Hasbro um, has a website called Hasbro Pulse. Yes. And when they announced this series, they had the special edition Snake Eyes 
uh, which basically has special packaging, extra weapons. This comes in this really cool case. It's real pretty. Super pretty. And so I remember, I don't know if you remember this, but I was a little hesitant. I'm like, do I really want this? And you're like, yes, you do want it. I was his shoulder devil. Yeah. I was like, do it. But I was so glad I did because that's honestly like the fav- my most favorite, like collectible i oh, have yeah like the box the packaging the weapons you get with it the little shrine to hold all the weapons yes only thing that's missing is his dog timber yes which who knows maybe we'll get it eventually and it'll sell, sell out just like everything else i mean or it could just be like everybody else and just go to like hobby lobby or ross <laughs> and just buy one of those and say there we go there's what, timber whatever that brand is those like hard plastic like animals that are uh, at every store yeah we probably could well, we didn't, I, I don't think we anticipated the craziness around this series, but they don't stay on the shelves. There have been... Sometimes they don't even make it to the shelf. No, no. You know, there's uh, conspiracy theories, but <laughs> we kind of think they're true. Um, <laughs> with this series, um, ooh, you know what? Look it up on your phone real quick. Oh. Um, with this series, you know, people are buying them left and right. You know, scalpers and bots are buying them off of Target because Target has some exclusives in there. Tell us some of the prices. Just look up the series on on Macari. Oh. (laughs) I know, right? Okay. John is going to indulge us with some prices. Now, keep in mind, retail price is $19.99. There was a figure, the Baroness, with a uh, a motorcycle that was $39.99. So just a little bit, you know, on the pricier side. Um, so let, let's pick, oh, I don't know. How about a, a Cobra Trooper, <laughs> which was a uh, <laughs> a Target exclusive. Just an infantry, you know, something you might build for armies yeah. and things like that. Nothing uh, too special, you wouldn't think. No, no, no. So, no. you know, on the Macari app, which is like an app to like buy and sell stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, on you know action figures collectibles whatnot so a two pack for the cobra troopers keep in mind retail value is 20 bucks for these things correct for two cobra troopers 240 dollars plus 10 dollars shipping oh! so you're looking at 250 easily Ooh! for a 20 dollar figure 20 dollar figure this just tells you how crazy it is uh, yes and it gets pretty bad even though those are ones that th- there's a there are four that are target exclusive that the prices I would the beachhead's what sixty? It's kind of like the lowest sixty to eighty bucks. Beachhead is about sixty. You know, Baroness with the with the motorcycles about a hundred. Mm-hmm. I think averaging. On I found Mercury. one for eighty. Okay, okay, well, not too bad. Eighty nine uh, plus shipping. Okay, all right. So yeah, um, about right. So like the Snake Eyes we were talking about. Yes. Snake Eyes was forty bucks. Yes, from Hasbro. Correct. This one I'm seeing one twenty five. Oh gosh. But free shipping. Oh well, bless their hearts. Yeah, I'm glad they were. You know, they, I hope. Hopefully, they can feed their family. I and mean, eat tonight. Yeah, <laughs> it's been insane. And so, you know, besides my little, you know, quarantine mishap of trying to figure out did I quarantine enough? Did I even get it? Do I even need to quarantine? But we've been on these hunts because the the and bless Target. You know, <laughs> we love Target, <laughs> but they're so bad at this. So whenever you go to certain store, stores, their systems say that they have certain ones on hand. But then the employees always say, well, we can't find them. Or, oh, we don't know if they're really, you know, the system might not be updated. Or street date is for this time. And it's it's been kind of crazy trying to hunt these down. And I think part of it, too, just on the Target employees, and I think they're probably annoyed with this whole Target oh, yes. G.I. Joe thing. Like, I'm yes. sure that's, like, a number one figure question. And, <laughs> like, even when you call, like, their customer service number, it's like, we can't tell you inventory status. Mm-hmm. And you call anyway. Do you have this figure? <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you not hear the automated thing? But you're like, maybe you'll catch a nice employee. That'll be helpful. Like, yes. you know, the guy that we talked to, oh. he was like... We're expected to get him on this date. If you come around this time, we're like, oh, cool. So we went around that time. Mm-hmm. We didn't find anything that day, but we did find some Funko Pops that you were looking for yes, on correct. one of our ventures. So correct. it wasn't all in vain. No, 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 no. 
And yeah, just, uh, you know, shout out Layton Target, Layton Utah Target, because they've had a couple pretty nice employees that kind of steer you the right way. Yeah, they've been good to us. Yeah. Other ones, we're not going to name any names. They no, haven't been so great. Not so great. But that, you know what? Hey, it's it's fine. I think, like you said, it's 100% true. They are probably sick to death of hearing Cobra, you know, Trooper, and sick to death of hearing, uh, you know, Snake Eyes, and all those, all the characters. All the characters. It's crazy. Have. So... It got us thinking for our main topic, what we want to talk about tonight is, you know, these figures are incredibly detailed. They are, you know, have a lot of great, you know, accessories. The packaging is beautiful. Oh, the art. Oh. Yeah. They 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 had the brilliant idea of having a artist do unique artwork for each box. The, the, the label, you know, is, you know, the, the font and the label is the same. There, there's a poster on the very back of the post of, of the boxes that are the same, but the side art and also the character art in the front are all by different artists. So each box, you know, for each character is unique. And so it's such a cool, unique series that it kind of got us thinking about if if another reason why we're dying to have these is really the nostalgia factor. I mean... Oh, yeah. Thinking about cartoons from the 80s that we know and love. You know, for me, G.I. Joe is up there because my parents, you know, my parents were both special education teachers. And, you know, obviously teachers don't get paid a ton, you know, but somehow they're, they're, they were able every Christmas and every birthday to get me at least a couple Joes and some Legos, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, we... Not even talking about how expensive these Joes are. You know, Legos by themselves can be ridiculous. And they somehow found ways to buy, you know, the the one of my most memorable Christmases was this huge Lego fort. You know, like the old Western Ooh. fort. Oh, it's still one of my favorite builds I ever did. I spent hours Christmas morning after opening presents, presents just building it and playing with it. And it's just one of my favorite sets of all time. And I know it wasn't cheap. I was like jaw on the floor. Like, <laughs> how did you guys get this? You know, but they, they saved and they found a way every single year. But I think they cared about you or something. Eh, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. But no, <laughs> I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. I promise. But, you know, there's G.I. Joe has that nostalgia that we remember just from growing up, especially in the 80s. Um, I mean, John, how much time did you spend? You know, I, I mean, any you may not have watched it all the time as a kid, but... You know, especially nowadays with episodes being on YouTube, I mean, G.I. Joe's kind of still been with us for a long time. It has. Um, I remember spending a lot of time watching, you know, cartoons from that era. So you got your G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. Some of the big ones for me were Silverhawks, uh, mm. Brave Star, Thundercats, He-Man. And they just had, like, some of the best intros. Like, even coming back and, like, yes. watching them, like, wow, these episodes don't make any sense, but the 80s had the best intro music. Yes, they do. Like, cartoons nowadays can't touch them. No. No, no, no. And it, it was, like, the mix of, like, the synth and the drums and catchy lyrics. So catchy. You know? The, it, just the G.I. Joe theme song. is, mm -hmm. is You still remember it to this day. Oh, yeah. Um, and you sing along, and you're like, yo, Joe! Yes, every time, you know? You, you look at Cobra Commander, you can't help but scream in his, like, whiny voice, Cobra! <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's so memorable. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's, it, it is a big part of why we're looking for these figures. Because, you know, it's memorable. And they're so well detailed. My goodness, they're beautiful. <laughs> they're beautiful figures. Yes. What, um, so you mentioned a couple of those 80s TV shows that you grew up watching. Are there any figures from your 80s that you have as part of your collection besides these gi joes um are there any figures that you have that you're you know proud to own or just figures that you played with as a kid that um that you know the, the reason why i'm asking is I, I would argue that toys nowadays don't quite mash up with what we had i mean 
in the 80s and 90s, like, action figures were pretty heavy, you know, and, and there were action figures, there was accessories, you know, like, you know, the, the vehicles that you'd get with them. Um, you know, nowadays you have what? You have Pokemon, you have, um, Meh. <laughs> you know, Beyblade, and you have all these kind of weird gimmicky, I guess you can call it gimmicky stuff. But what, uh, well, growing up, what were some of those memorable toys that you had? Um, I remember probably the biggest collection I had growing up was probably Ninja Turtles and He-Man. Mm, yes. Had a couple of Brave Star figures. Um, it almost felt like it was a competition between me and my closest cousin uh, growing up. Because mm-hmm. I was always be jealous that he would have like the, you know, Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain. Oh, yeah. And all I would have was like the vehicles. But I'd be like, oh, hey, look, I got the He-Man with the battle damage chest when you hit him. It like, you know, shows the scar Yeah, and stuff. that's right. Although kind of looking back and compared to like how figures are now, because, you know, figures only move so much because they didn't bend and it was just kind of like robot movement. Oh, yeah. But you're like, oh, this is awesome. Oh, yeah. Got the best figure ever. Um, I had, I was never able to get Thundercats and mm. that still bugged me because yep. my friend would have them. Yeah. And I was like, how'd you, but I want, and then I finally was able to get my hands on a lion mm-hmm. and somehow like in moving, like his arm got snapped off. Oh. <gasps> Oh no! So instead of him losing the sword like he did in every episode, he lost an arm. Wow! You think he was part of Star Wars or something? The battle. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say battle damage, Lionel. Yeah. Uh, growing up, I had so I had a buddy of mine. Uh, his name was Tim, and he lived a couple doors down from me, and almost kind of the same as you. He he had some of the major He Man toys. Um, I had some of the figures, but he had Castle Grayskull as well. And so we would play all the time. Um, and I think one reason why I kind of... I, I didn't necessarily grow out of He-Man, but th- what made G.I. Joe so cool was that it had more articulation points. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, instead of the stiff arm going up and down along with the legs, you know, you can almost do kind of a roundhouse kick motion with those G.I. Joes. Yeah, because and... the G.I. Joes had the, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but like in the middle, instead of it being like a ball joint like how they are now, they have like the rubber band. Yes. Oh. So you could like yes. twist them around and like, you know, you had the full knee bend. Mm-hmm. Some of them you could do like the hands kind of, you know, karate kid, praying mantis kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I I um I, I had very bad instances with those rubber bands in the waist oh snap yeah yeah i played a little rough with my joes i mean i was rough with my rock soldiers for turtles that's true i i I like to i have strong memories of we would be i don't know if it was like a family friend's house or maybe as a relative Mm -hmm. but like my buddies and i i don't you know boys will be boys yeah we would throw weights on them and see how many pieces they would break into Oh. They're rock soldiers. I mean, yeah. you know, they're they're cannon fodder. Of course, of course, you got to blow them up. <laughs> but I never did that to the turtles themselves. No, no, no. He, you got to take care of the boys. You have your line. You know, you can't cross that line. I, I even went so far as I never did it to Bebop and Rocksteady either. Wow. I mean, that was kudos to me. I think <laughs> I, I was tempted on Crane because Crane just bugged me. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome, <laughs> d- turtles, and you're welcome, Bebop and Rocksteady. Right. Uh, <laughs> I um. <laughs> So I and my parents will make fun of me to this day. I would usually take a couple Joes with me and play with them when I had to take a bath at night. And so, but this is the, here's a, here's what I would do. I would pretend that Cobra had a secret ooze factory that they were making this acid that they were going to use to like take over the world. And so some of my Joes would, you know, end up getting doused in the acid and we'd have to save the day. Well, hours later in the bathtub, you know, I'd finally get out eventually. But my mom, for an, a long time, couldn't figure out why we ran out of, out of shampoo so quick. <laughs> and so, you know, sure enough, the, the Pert Plus, you know, the green uh, shampoo, it worked perfectly as an ooze. And so, you know, I would, I would have myself a good time with them Joes. And um, make my parents spend a lot of money on shampoo. So, mom, dad, sorry. That's my bad. It was epic battles, though. It was epic battles. Oh, man. Yeah, there was a couple couple Joes that broke during during that time. I mean, what do you got to do? You know? It they're, they're on the stormy seas, and it's it's the, the, the <laughs> ooze is everywhere. It's going to take over the world. Like, I got to do something to stop it. <laughs> man, just so, it's just fun memories. 
fun, fun memories. What, um, I, I think with, with this resurgence with G.I. Joe and the fact that they're coming out with another wave, you know, Zartan is coming out. Um, another Cobra Trooper is coming out. One that is hopefully not as hard to find. Hopefully it'll be more easier to access, but we'll see. I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm not going to hold my breath because also with this upcoming wave, there's two more that are Target exclusive. You know, Firefly, who's the demolition guy, you know, Cobra guy, mm-hmm. you know, Scarred Face, which is kind of cool. Uh, but then they're making the, the Viper Soldier as well, which... I'm just going to call it. We're never going to find. No, probably not. <laughs> are, are there... I, I am assuming that because of how popular these things have been, we're going to see more. Right? Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to see more Joes. Now, the issue... I'm going to put you on the spot here. because oh, I, I, no, I know you've been watching the episodes a lot more than I have. Uh, I know they're going to have more waves, yet there are hundreds of Joes and oh, Cobra. Man. Right? Hundreds of them. So, you obviously can't make, like, every single Joe. But are there maybe one or two that you would like to see in, in you know, for this upcoming Waves? I I'll, mean, there's probably more than one or two, to right. be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If you know them. Yeah. I, I, I know a couple. I'll, I'll I, I just, a couple off the top of my head. And I never get their names right, because I just never get their names right. Um, Shipwreck is one. I think that's the, the guy with the sailor hat, and he had the, the parrot. parrot. Yeah. Like, come on, that would be kind of cool. Oh, yeah. As a six-inch figure. Um, <laughs> that'd be really fun to see. Um, I used to have... One guy I used to play with um, a lot was... I think his name was Wild Bill. So he was a helicopter the pilot. pilot. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he had a... <laughs> <laughs> he, he just had a great... He was a redhead with a great mustache and, you know, aviator glasses. And <laughs> anyway, I used to play with that figure a ton. So that'd be fun to see. Um, you know, Lady J, obviously. Oh, yeah. We, we need to have her at some point in We time. need more female representation on them. Yeah. Right now, there's only two, right? It's just... Baroness and Scarlet. That's yep. it. So we need some more, which means Jinx. You know, we gotta have her mm-hmm. as well. Um... The only other one are the twins that I, I just oh, I yeah. want to see. That's a definite. That's one everybody would go crazy over. And it yeah. better not be a Target exclusive. Oh, I, I think it's going to be worse. I What if it's going to be a like a Comic-Con exclusive? Stop it. I'm just saying, what if? Like, here, you know, this new normal, how long is it going to last? You know, I know these companies are itching to have in-person events. You know, Comic Con had a nice, like, online presence for their couple days. Had some good panels and things like that. But obviously, it wasn't the same. No. And kind of Hasbro Con kind of was born because of all the virtual stuff going on. I'm worried this will be our new norm for the next couple of years till we kind of nip this COVID thing in the bud. I mean, as long as we properly nip it in the bud, like I, I'm okay. Right. Like, I can do that. Um. I, I hope, like, I, I think that the twins will somehow be some kind of Comic Con exclusive. Like, it'll that. be a two pack, and do you know how quick that's gonna sell? So I'm, I'm hoping that, it, as bad as this sounds, I almost want Comic Con next year to be virtual again because then all these great exclusives that we have had access to are, you know, they won't be available to us because we're not going to get tickets to go to Comic-Con. No, and it'll crash the servers. Oh, yeah, 100%. But it's okay. But it's okay. We got so, we got a great a great figure in the Snake Commander, um, Cobra, or Snake Supreme Cobra Commander. Yes. Oh, that is such a pretty figure. One of the convention exclusives, and it's just a, kind of a different design, color palette. The presentation, the box is just gold with, you know, Cobra symbols everywhere. And Look it up on YouTube. Cobra, or Supreme Cobra Commander. That's right. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So, anyway, I, I got sidetracked there for a second. Sorry. <laughs> Thinking about the prettiness. But I, I can see the twins coming at some point in time as some kind of two-pack. And, I don't know, exclusive somewhere. Hopefully not Target, but, you know, at least maybe it'll be you know, available on their Hasbro con or something, which I'll buy the membership again. I, I, I want that. Uh, <laughs> so off the top of your head, are there some Joes that you would like to see? 
Um, off the top of my head, I mean, you named a couple. Obviously, I would love Lady J mm-hmm. and the twins. Yeah. Um, for me, I feel like a staple would be Flint. Um, yes. I'd oh, like to yeah. see uh, probably Shipwreck. I'd probably want to see, and I can't think of what his name is. He was the Indian character character that could talk to the animals. Oh, oh it? no. Okay, hold on. Do Spirit? Have, no. Do I have enough battery in my phone to do this? Um, Why are you looking that up? I'm going to think of my other ones. Okay. Um, I'd like to see a stalker. Um, there was one, and I don't know if he was just a random Joe. I still have the like 3.75 version of him, but he was like a ninja. He had like tiger stripe pants. He had like the thing across his uh, chest, like uh, Quick Kick has. But it has like grenades on it, and he had like a oh. orange bandana around his head, almost like he was blind, kind of like uh, Linkso from uh, Thundercats. Right, 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 right. Um, and I want figures from my six inches. Okay, or not figures, vehicles. Yes, that that's another thing that we're going to have to figure out. Um, oh no, my sorry, sidetracked. My wife just sent me pictures of of Joe's. Yeah, she usually has better luck when it comes to toy hunting than we do. Oh, I don't know what it is about her. Apparently, she's at a Walmart that found the 3.75 um, Roadblock, as well as the AWE Striker. Ooh. Oh, don't do it. Nope, I got to text her. Sorry, sidetrack. Don't do it. No don't money. Don't do it. Just kidding. So, Google keeps bringing up Mutt, and it's not Mutt. No, it's not it, Mutt. It's... it's uh... Gia Joe. Oh my gosh, I got like 1% left. Come on. G.I. Joe. Yep, his name was Spirit. Oh, thank goodness. I'm glad you found it. Yep, I found it. <laughs> I just, you know, I'm, you know, like Ryan was saying, I've been rewatching it because they had this link on YouTube where it's like, you know, 24 7 watching G.I. Joe's. Yes. And yes. just seeing some of these characters and just kind of having memories. Oh, because Zartan's coming out, I would love to have his group. So I have the Dreadnoughts. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, there are some Facebook groups out there that are all about G.I. Joe Classified. And someone is making their own Dreadnought group. Right. Uh, just custom figures. Oh, and man. The quality is just... Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I'm so jealous. I'm like, I'm, I I can't even... Not even on your level. Like, my customs are okay, but I do pretty simple stuff. That's right. That's right. I think the last one, though, that we have to get at some point would be a Serpentor. At some Ooh. point. Ooh. I think that one has to be an exclusive, though. You know, because I you can know, see them doing the same box as a Snake Supreme, uh, Cobra Commander, you know, that kind of presentation. You know what they could do, mm-hmm. talking about exclusives, what if they did a two-pack with Serpentor and Sergeant Slaughter? Ooh. Or maybe even Serpentor and Flint. Or what if they did Serpentor with his little hover thing he had oh and have a vehicle included with it yeah oh man That'd see the so possibilities good. man it's ridiculous there's so many there's so many and and they're going to sell these like again i just i'm so surprised how quickly they sold like i know there's a lot of people that grew up in the 80s that grew up with this tv show but man i, I just never expected well, this amount of demand and i think it. some of it too is like I don't even know if it's necessarily like people like us that grew up with it. Like, I think it's like people that maybe their parents introduced them to it Mm -hmm. or maybe they're like, Oh wow, these are really popular. Let me jump on this. Right. And you know, our favorite scalpers, (laughs) people that'll buy like, you know, 20 of them, flip them online. Like you heard those prices we mentioned earlier, $20 figure going for like two to 300 bucks. It's so bad. And I, I, I hope that, you know, maybe post COVID, things might get better with shipping and things like that and then the manufacturing and maybe we won't have this issue i don't know i don't know well i think since gi joe so doing so well is there another 80s theme that you would like to see get the gi joe treatment so like an 80s franchise you know movie tv show to get that same type of detail mm. I'm going to put this out there, and I might be the only one that actually really enjoyed this show, but I would love to see, like, Silverhawks. Okay. Done in, like, the G.I. Joe, because I remember the figures were pretty simple. Like, they kind of had, like, the 
I remember if you remember like the Batman figures where you'd squeeze his legs and his arm would open up. Oh yeah. And so that's what the Silverhawks would do. Like they weren't really posable. Mm -hmm. Like even the quality wasn't that great. But like as a kid, I was like, ooh, I want to have them all. Oh yeah. And especially get like the vehicle, the... Can't What's even think of what it's, uh, the ship is called. It's going to come to me later. Oh, their ship? Yeah. Oh, I don't even eh. know. But yeah, I would love to see that series get like a remake on it. Oh yeah, that'd be true. Um, I think Voltron could be interesting. Although they did make t toys with the new series, didn't they? So maybe they wouldn't do the same uh, type they've of... They've already kind of rehashed Voltron. I feel like Voltron's been overdone. Mm, okay. Okay. Because you've had, I mean, you had the original, and then, you know, then you had the vehicle. So you had the lions, the vehicles. Yeah. They did that weird CGI one. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of this weird CGI one yeah. where they made, like, a toy line from that, I think. They didn't do well. No. Oh, no. No, no. no. They went back to what worked, and then, you yeah. know, you had your Nickelodeon version of it, and then where, like, the original pilots... We're kind of training like the next generation of pilots, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then they went back and in the Netflix version, and you know, released those the lines from that. So I'm like, okay, I love Ultron. Let's do something else. Right, right. I uh, so me personally, you know, I'm gonna say two franchises, but toys are already being made from these franchises. But I kind of want to see different companies tackle them. So, Thundercats is one of my all-time favorites. Love, love, love Thundercats. And so, having like a six-inch figure like the G.I. Joe Classified, with all the articulation points, with the accessories, the price point as well, <laughs> I, I would love to see that. Um, I know they have the Ultimate series going on right now ultimate but i don't know what the price is on those they they're seem not a little cheap. yeah they're a little expensive so you know again those there's figures out but i'd rather to have something a little more affordable <laughs> personally um and, and a toy collector's expensive it can be well and especially with you know there are some franchises that are with um the company uh, nika um did i say that right neca neca whatever Tomato, tomato, it's N okay. N E C A. <laughs> so, you know, NECA has the Ninja Turtles franchise. So they're making some based on the 90s movie, um, but they're also making some based on the cartoon, and they're also expensive and hard to find. Um, yeah, because they're doing two packs. So, like, right. I mean, you get two foot soldiers, it's 50 bucks. Right. You get April and what? Was it another foot soldier, I think? Yes. From the cartoon? Yep. Although they haven't released an April from the movie yet. Not yet. I need that to like finish out my collection of them. That'd be nice. And hopefully not a two pack though. Hopefully like no, just, just make individual. her by herself. Yeah, that'd be really nice. Um, you know, and they have just, they're incredibly detailed. They're just a little pricier than, than others. They have a great Back to the Future series that I want so bad, but it's, you know, Marty McFly is like 30 bucks. And so. Prioritize. Uh, you only get one. I, well, and I got to save up for it, which is probably a good thing. Yeah. Um. There is one. <laughs> There's, I'll just put this out there in the universe because I think I might be the only one that wants this. Um, but if there is, were some proper like six inch Big Trouble in Little China <laughs> figures, <laughs> I would die a happy man. Like oh. they have like them, you know, was it Super 7? Is that the website? They, they do have some that are almost like Kenner like. You know, old, old school. And I'm like, I, I want something with articulation, with the detail. And I'll probably be the only one that buys it. And that's fine. I can live with that. But, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll buy them. I'll buy them, Hasbro. Make it. Please. <laughs> NECA, maybe not not so much. <laughs> you, you're expensive. <laughs> right. I don't want to. Well, if, let us know what you would like to see. Um I'm cu I'm curious about you know, even those that are not toy collectors, you know, there's still a collectible market. You know, there's Funkos, there's you know, there's statues, there's busts, there, there's all there's a bunch of like memorabilia that right. like, the '80s are like making a comeback for sure. Well, seriously, well, and you know, whenever we go past Target, there's always a huge section section of uh, uh, Stranger Things. You know, obviously it's a you know more modern show, but it's kind of based on the stranger things is all about the 80s right exactly and so that one that's a huge franchise so i mean the 80s are 
it will never go away. There's, it's just a time period where people, it, it just things were so memorable and well written, and you know, there's just a generation of us that grew up in that time where it'd be fun to see more collectibles and more nostalgic things like that that we can, you know think about and buy and, and remember. So uh, let us know what you think, uh, either on our anchor.fm voicemail or let us know on our, on our socials. Is, is there like an 80s franchise that you would like to see um, be made into some kind of memorabilia or collectors or anything like that? Let us know because I'm kind of curious what other, I mean, there's so many franchises, so I'm kind of curious what you know what others would think i'd be curious if they bring up one that we haven't even thought of maybe they Mm -hmm. had different experiences in the 80s than what we had right yeah (laughs) they're looking at these they're like ew no right (laughs) i'm all about the lightning collection power rangers from the 90s you know like (laughs) and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that um i just there seems to be a lot of of franchises that are ripe for some kind of collectible you know can you imagine NECA doing like a breakfast club (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it would probably sell like crazy, and they'd be really super detailed, but, you know, it's like how, you know, what direction do you want to go in the 80s for, you know, collectibles? Like, action figures, you can only go so far, but, you know, if you're going just a collectibles route, then Mm -hmm. there's all kinds of franchises you can do. Oh, yeah. You know, what was, I'm trying to remember, what was a weird one? It wasn't weird, but but NECA made like uh, uh, Terminator Two line, mm. so they have, and, and so I guess. Oh, you talking about the two pack? Yeah, yeah. yeah so it it's was having Sarah a two pack with Connor. Sarah and John, and then having a separate, you know, T one thousand, and then the T one hundred. I think they have. Yeah, they did. You know. Oh, and the you know we even saw like a RoboCop, you know, Terminator like mashup. Oh yeah, it's from the. From the video game, RoboCop vs. Terminator. Exactly. So, uh, just there's a lot of these, you know, franchises are out there that, you know, I, I would probably sell like hotcakes if they if, if they went and did, did movies and stuff. But, again, universe, Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> just putting it out there. Please. Please, for the love of all, it's holy. And Silverhawks. Give I'll, me Silverhawks. I'll allow it. All out, super hot. Well, we we need to wrap up the the podcast for tonight, but we wanted to leave you with um, just a couple, just a little bit of video game news. Um, we are officially oh almost one month away from the launch of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, which is kind of exciting, nerve wracking, kind of crazy, kind of crazy. Um, in the news, you know, their Xbox, the Xbox Series X has made its way out to uh, news outlets, influencers, things like that. Um, so I wanted to share just a little bit of, of of some impressions that some people have had, just because these were questions that were that answered my my hesitation to go next gen. You know, I had concerns about. Okay, how fast is it really? Is it quiet? You know, things like that. Well, lots of articles are confirming that the Xbox Series X is pretty ridiculously fast, which is awesome. And some are even saying whisper quiet. Ooh. Yeah, which is exciting. That would be nice. So, I my console not to sound like a jet engine. Oh my gosh, that'd be so great. Um, so VentureBeat.com. Um, here is just some thoughts that um, I want to just share real quick. Um, if you if you don't follow him, Jeff Grubb from VentureBeat, he, he's pretty knowledgeable and super funny. He, um, he, he was the one that tweeted out that video of the PlayStation 5 and um, Deuce Bigelow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you have to look it up it's salty language i'm not gonna play play it for you um so with these preview units that are going out with the xbox series x that's all they are they are just preview units so let's look at the load times shall we here's what jeff had to say 
and this was one of my biggest concerns. So here's what he said. I tested load times in games like Assassin's Creed Origins, Final Fantasy XV, and No Man's Sky. I did some comparisons versus the internal storage on an Xbox One X, but I also tried external storage on the Series X. And what I found is that the SSD and the Series X's velocity architecture is always going to save you time. The loading, loading Final Fantasy XV on the Xbox Series X took around 13 seconds. Oh. And that's a Final Fantasy game. Dang. Yeah, 13 seconds. On the internal storage of the Xbox One X, the same loading sequence required longer than a minute. So we're, we're talking quick. So current gen current consoles right now take about a minute, minute and a half. Ugh, I hate the load time on games now. Right. And so now 13 seconds to load that is crazy. Um, no Man's Sky, I think, is, is one of those ones that are known for the long load times. Um, about 30 seconds compared to about a minute 20 to load. So you got to imagine like Destiny and things like that. That's going to be closer to that so pretty crazy right um the xbox series x has the quick resume so you can you know basically turn off a game and start another one you can have up to four different games running at the same time you can just navigate between each one um he says in my test i went from an xbox waiting in standby mode and i powered it on and then jumped into grand theft auto 4 sekiro no man's sky and final fantasy 15 in under 90 seconds Jeez. so he turned it on was able to switch and turn on those games with under 90 seconds which is nutso right now the external hard drive he says it does take longer so the internal ssd is going to save time so just kind of keep that in mind. Unfortunately, those extra SSDs are super expensive, like a couple hundred bucks. Mm. Yeah. So mm. it just, I would suggest you delete and re-download <laughs> instead of trying to buy the external. Um, now, last little bit here, we talked about frame rate. And remember, this is a preview build. So it's not even like the finished product and they don't even have like, optimized games to play on it they're just playing backwards compatible games at this point um grand theft auto 4 averaged about 60 frames a second on the series x versus about 48 on the xbox one x um final fantasy 15 got close to so 59 frames a second versus 42 on the xbox one x um <laughs> sekiro um <laughs> 60 frames a second on the Xbox Series X and only got like 37 frames a second on the Xbox One X. <laughs> so overall, <laughs> and this was, let me see if I can find it. His tagline is, is so funny with this article. Xbox Series X impressions, no going back to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Like the load times and the frames per second are super impressive. Mm. So j just real quick, what do you think? Excited? A little more excited for the Series X? I'm a little more excited. Okay. I was trying to be good to only get one console this year. Well, okay. Now, just remember, the PlayStation this week also had a blog um, and a, a, a really cool seven-minute video that one of the developers, like, broke down the, the console itself so you can see the inside parts and he talked about the different parts. A really cool video. It's like seven minutes, but super interesting. Um, besides the fact that it the... the PlayStation 5 is just stupid big. Like it's 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 dummy thick. It is it's a big boy. Which, you know, we're excited about obviously. Yes. Um <laughs> So, you know, definitely get on the PlayStation blog, watch that video cuz it's very interesting, and I think that video is kind of a sign that preview units are going to start going out for PlayStation 5. I want one. Give me a preview unit. I know, right? Sony, please give what us I one. Talk to? Xbox, give it give us one. We'll, we'll review it real good. Trust us. Yes. Um, so I think we're going to hopefully hear some preview stuff about the PlayStation 5 soon. Because, again, if it is like the Series X where it's, you know, bumps up the frame rate and it's quick and it's quiet, man, no matter what console you get, we're going to be happy as, as consumers. So... Anyway, wanted to leave that with you guys. Um, just a couple little tidbits, and hopefully we'll have some more information soon. 
um, in regards to the PlayStation 5. But so far, everyone has seemed super pleased with the Series X. So you got to imagine, since we're about a month away, that pretty soon preview units of the PlayStation 5 and maybe... Miles Morales will start hitting, hand, you know, getting into reviewers' hands, mm. and you know we can get some really good information there. So, anyway, it's a good time. It's a good time to be a gamer. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for tonight's episode. We want to thank you for sticking with us. We want to thank you for letting us take our little pause for a toy hunt and <laughs> Life. A, a wannabe quarantine. Um, we'll be back soon with another episode, but please, please, please give us some feedback on our social media pages. Um, again, we are at EnterCodePod on Twitter and on Facebook. We are on uh, enter, uh, Anchor.fm if you want to leave a voicemail. Um, right on Instagram as well at Intercode Podcast. Yeah, share your thoughts. Tell us what you love, what you don't like about us. That's so right. We can learn and grow as a podcast. That's exactly right. Because we're here for you. We're, we're here for the people. We're here to entertain. And we're the that, people's champs. If that means John needs to sing our new theme song every time, then that's what we're gonna do. No, we're just gonna pre-record that. Well, okay. Just loop it in. Get it uh, done. Done. I'm, I'm excited. Wheat. <laughs> now, real quick, we have a homework assignment for you. Yes. Okay. Next episode, we want you to think about your top five video game characters that would make the best superhero team. Okay, so it can be from any game, it can be from any platform, it can be any company. Just pick five characters that would make a superhero team. And why you chose them. Yes. And we'll share our thoughts about our team as well. That's all right. Let's let us know on our social medias what your team is going to be. Think about it. We're going to record it next week and we'll have our thoughts. You know, will I pick only Xbox characters just to really tick off John? Yeah, he would. Maybe. I might. Because he's a jerk, but it's okay. I I love him anyway. No, I'm already kind of getting my rough draft in my head and... I mean, PlayStation's going to be very prominent <laughs> in it. I'm, yeah! I'm not going to lie. So, until then, work on your homework assignment. We will be back next week with another another episode, and we'll talk about it. All Later! Right? Thank you all. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.